All right. Well, good morning. Uh, welcome, everybody, to the Focus on the Future event. We really appreciate your coming. Um, just a couple of ground rules just so that you can uh, make sure that you're understanding how to participate if you'd like. We will have a question and answer session for students at the end or for uh, any other adults who are attending, if you're a counselor or a special ed teacher. Uh, and we will allow folks to do that in the order that they either ask their question on the chat or raise their hand. So you do have the options at the bottom of your screen to participate in the chat. You can certainly feel free to do that. You can also raise your hand and we will get to you when we get to our question period at the very end. Uh, we will not be doing questions back and forth as the presentation goes in the interests of time. So without further ado, I will share my screen and we can start with the event. So I'm hoping that everybody can see what I'm seeing now and that you can hear me well. Um, I'm gonna start going. My name is Noah Hayes McKiernan. I am the Disability Resources Advisor at Coconino Community College. And our purpose here today is to help you all as prospective students in a post-secondary environment to kind of know what's coming and what you need to do. Um, this could be for anything you choose to do, even if you're not coming to Coconino Community College. We still want to make this event as a way for you to get some information and prepare for whatever it is you're going to do after high school in a way that is practical and hopefully efficient. So we're going to talk about our, our mission, the team, uh, how is college as compared to dis, you know, disability resources or special education in um, you know, high school? Um, how do you get eligible? What do you do to get your um, accommodations set up for college if you do attend college classes? Um, what we do and do not provide in terms of accommodations, assistive technology, what to expect when we go through the process, and then how to uh, advocate for yourself, things that you need to do to make sure that you get everything that you need and that you're entitled to as a person who identifies uh, as a person with disabilities. Uh, and then we'll, we'll get you set up with anything else you might need to go further at the end with uh, appointments or advising sessions, whatever you like to do, if you'd like to move forward with that. So this is our mission. We have a very clear mission in our department to make sure that we make everything in our school as accessible as possible and to provide people with equal opportunity. Um, this has to do with focusing on people's abilities and not their disabilities. We wanna make sure that you get the, the same fair shot that everyone else gets in our school uh, to get yourself a, a degree. You know, and, or get yourself to work if you don't need a degree, because um, we do have offer, we do have many certificate programs that are available for people if they don't want a degree, if they just want to get to work. So let's talk about K through 12 and college and the difference between the two. In K through 12, which you're about to finish at the end of high school, you are legally bound underneath the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, which is you know enacted by Congress a while ago to Make sure that people who identify as people with disabilities, who test with disabilities, get what they need in terms of modification and accommodation in the school environment. In college, we go with different laws that we use to protect people with disabilities. The Americans with Disabilities Act and 504, uh, which both do exist in the uh, K through 12 environment. They're just more limited in terms of what they can allow people to provide as compared to the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. So individualized instruction in high school as compared to student accommodation, you're not going to get service at a college that says you're going to get 30 minutes of reading comprehension each week with a teacher. That, that's not something that we provide. That's a service and then not an accommodation. So make sure that you're aware of that, that you're, you cannot expect to get uh, like a resource room or something like that. We do, however, provide tutoring, which can kind of help replace that. Uh, curricular modification. We're not going to change tests. We're not going to change assignments. We are an accredited institution. Everybody jumps over the same bar. Parent involvement. Uh, you're an adult, so we're going to work with you. Your parents are certainly welcome to be in the room if you allow them to be, but as the adult in charge of your own education, you're the person signing on the dotted line. You're the person who's expected to take the responsibilities that go along with that. 
Uh, so you self-advocate to request services. So if you want help, you need to ask for it as compared to an IEP, which is mandatory for anybody who qualifies. Uh, accommodations are recommended from us, whereas you use your school psychologist to recommend different interventions, and then that's what drives your individual education plan in high school. Um, we get our documentation from physicians, psychiatrists, or licensed professionals as compared to a school psychologist. Um, we will also accept your testing from your school, however. So your IEP and your MET, we can take that from your high school, and as long as it's not five years old, we will use it to be able to help us provide the service that you need. ADA and 504 make for equal access as compared to IDEA and IEP, which just wants to get you graduated from high school. That's kind of one of the main differences. Student success. In K through 12, it's the school's responsibility. In uh, college, it's your responsibility as the student in terms of providing everything you need to be able to make yourself successful. Practical differences every day. What is the difference between high school and college? In K through 12 high school, you've got periods, you've got a schedule, it's structured for you. In college, you create your own schedule. You can choose to go to school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or you can go to choose to go to school not at all and do fully online, or you can choose Monday, Wednesday, you know, whatever's best for you. Evening, morning, it's up to you. In uh, high school, they provide assessment of disability. That's going to be with your, uh, your MET. You need to self-identify in college and provide your own documentation. Like I said, we will accept your MET and your IEP from high school as long as it's not too old. Eligibility. We determine your eligibility dep depending on how it gets in the way of learning. So we want to make sure, you know, in terms of your functional impact of what gets in the way, that's the barrier that we look to try and either overcome or adapt to to be able to help you so that you can be successful in school. Um, in terms of accommodations in college, you're the one who sends your letter to your instructors. If your school uh, won't do it for you, you know, we, we, we're not like a special education teacher who holds an IEP meeting and has all of your teachers sign it. Your accommodations are different. You are approved for those accommodations. You show them to the instructor, then they sign it for you. And then we have a process where we get that back. No curricular modifications. We're not going to change the number of questions on a test. We're not going to change the number of assignments on an assignment. You're still going to need to do what everybody else does. This is an accredited institution, which means we say that when you get a degree or a certificate from us, that you've done X amount of work, and that amount of work cannot change. What we can do is accommodate you to help you better finish that work, but it's not going to change in terms of its amount. All right, eligibility. You're expected to contact our office separately from admission into the college. We have a form that you fill out. We have a web page. It's pretty easy to get in touch with us. We can help you through the process if you just want to make an appointment with us. It's very simple to do, but it is not going to be done for you. You must do it yourself. You can get uh, accommodations for placement exams and standardized tests if you like. So if you would like to test with accommodation to see where you land in terms of your English and your math, we can provide that. Uh, you can participate with your parents or an advocate if you like, but it's up to you. So if you don't want your parents in the meeting, it's up to you who says that, and then you can do something about that from there. And then you provide your documentation of your disability, which means your old IEP or MET or anything that you have from a doctor or a provider, that's up to you to provide. It's not something we will do for you. And eligibility determination is an interactive process. We're going to interview you. You're the expert on you, and we want to find out how to best serve you by learning from you and asking you questions and then using all of your documentation as well. So it's an interactive process in that we're going to talk to you and we're going to work with you. And it's also something that can change. You know, if you later on a, a year down the road find that something else might work better for you and you want to see if we might be able to provide it, ask us and, and we'll work with you. We provide accommodations individually. So in terms of how we go through the process, we definitely want to make sure that students understand that they are going to be worked with on a one-on-one -on -one basis and that we will, from there, create a tailored accommodation plan that's very similar to your tailored IEP. No IEP is exactly the same as anybody else's. It's gonna be similar in terms of accommodations here. I am going to go ahead and hand this over to Jarrett 
He's my supervisor. He's the other person who works in disability resources at CCC. And he's gonna take you th through the next few slides. Hi, so my name is Jared Stoll and I am the coordinator for Disability Resources. And I also work with Noah in the office as well. And so uh, once we uh, com once we do the uh, interactive interview process and we determine your eligibility, we come up with some accommodations for you guys. Um, and some common accommodations that we have here at CCC um, are, for example, note taking. So if you guys have difficulty taking notes in class, uh, we can provide a note taker for you in the classroom. If this doesn't excuse you from taking notes, you still have to take the notes to the best of your ability, but we, we could provide uh, a note taker, someone else in the classroom who would um, basically take another set of notes for you. Um, another accommodation, a common accommodation would be extra time on test, uh, a quieter testing environment, um, uh, an audio recorder if you need your, your lectures recorded. So it's all indiv individualized uh, once we have that uh, interview process. Um, okay, now next screen. Um, and once we have that interview process and I determine the eligibility and I look at your IEP and note report, I come up with what we call a letter of accommodation. And this letter of accommodation, this is kind of what it looks like uh, once it's complete. Uh, once it's complete, you have your classroom accommodations and your testing accommodations. And th these are the accommodations uh, that you can use in your classrooms um, during that semester. Um, now, once this is complete, you know, the ball's in your court as far as how, if, and when you decide to use these accommodations. Uh, you can, you guys can decide to use all these accommodations, um, one or two of them or none of them. Um, you know, it's entirely up to you. Or you can, you guys can decide to wait until finals to use these accommodations. Um, your instructors can't tell you how to use them. Your parents can't tell you how to use them. No one I can't tell you how to use them. It's entirely up to you. So you guys will get this letter of accommodation. Um, you guys will meet with Noah. He'll kind of go over it with you. He'll show you how to use your accommodations. And then once you guys get your classes set, Noah will help you send those off to your instructor so they know what accommodations you guys get as well. Okay, now next one, please. All right, so one thing you guys need to um, consider when you guys come to college and you get accommodations is that there are some things that we don't provide when you come to college, okay? Uh, some things that we don't provide are like medical and psych psychiatric assessments. Um, so if you come to college and you need documentation that supports your disability, we can't do that, uh, but we can refer you to someone out in the community who can test you if you need that documentation. Um, if you need legal services, uh, we cannot do that. If you need counseling services, um, if you need like personal devices such as laptops, uh, a wheelchair, medical equipment, um, again, those are some things that we cannot do. Um, if you know. If you need progress, if you need progress reports for your parents, um, those are on your on the website on your Canvas on your Canvas report, so you guys can pull those yourself. But we don't provide those for you. Okay. Uh, next slide, Noah. All right. Uh, so self advocacy. Uh, this is a big a big one for. A lot of new students coming into the into college, um, because this is a big step for a lot of new students. So when I mean self advocacy, what I'm talking about is being able to ask for help when you need it, uh, going to your instructor, um, you know, asking for help when you need it. Because um, the difference between college and high school. In high school, a lot of your teachers would come up to you, ask you how you're doing, if you need help on your homework assignments. In college, that's not necessarily the case. 
Um, it's not that the instructors don't want to help you. It's just that they're, they have a lot of classes to teach. They have a lot of students to, um, to watch over. Just that they don't have the time to do that. So um, you guys have to take that first step if you want, if you need help, okay? All our instructors are more than willing to help you. Uh, you just need to, you know, raise your hand, ask for help. If you're not comfortable asking for help in front of the class, all instructors do office office hours. So um, if you want to do that more one-on-one -on -one type of help, instructors do offer that kind of availability. Um, so if you guys aren't comfortable asking for help, um, now's the time to start practicing because in college, that's a big thing um, that you're going to have to start doing. Okay. So that's one skill I'd start practicing now so you guys get comfortable doing it. All right. All right. So um, that's the end of my bit. Uh, the next few slides, we're going to watch a couple um, video clips from different departments who offer different services here at the college. Um, they are for, the first video clip is from the Educational Opportunity Center, as well as uh, we're going to hear from TRIO and CCC to NAU. All right. Uh, I'm going to turn my volume up really high so that, it, it, that this works really well in terms of you being able to hear Taylor. Uh, I can also share the links individually for these opportunities um, from all the departments in the uh, in the chat at the end. All right. Welcome to the Focus on the Future event. My name is Taylor Harvey, and I am a student development coordinator intermediate for the TRIO program, Educational Opportunity Centers. Uh, my program is sponsored through NAU, but I am located here on the CCC Lone Tree main campus. Uh, our program is designed to assist individuals looking to begin their post-secondary educational journey. What that entails is allowing us to provide services, including uh, financial aid assistance, application assistance, scholarship assistance, as well as referring students to services that may assist them along that journey. All of our services are free. Uh, you would just need to contact your local EOC coordinator in order to set up an appointment, either via Zoom, telephone, or in person. To be eligible for our services, we do require our participants to be at least 18 years of age, U.S. residents, first-generation students, as well as low income. We do also assist individuals who are living with disabilities, as well as U.S. military veterans. If you're unsure that our Educational Opportunity Center services are right for you, please contact your local area coordinator to set up an appointment to see if we can best assist you. If we can't assist you, we are more than happy to find the resources that will assist you in your journey ahead. Good luck, and we look forward to seeing you. And as I did mention, I will put that in the chat for you all so that you can just click on it if you like. All right. The next video link we are going to screen is from our TRIO program. And I'll just start it because she's going to say everything you need to know. Welcome to TRIO Student Support Services, a grant funded program through the Department of Education. We are located at Coconino Community College, the Lone Tree Campus. To be eligible for our services, you must be considered a first-generation college student or be receiving a Pell Grant or be a student with a documented disability working with our Disability Resources Office. If you have any one of these three uh, eligibility criteria, then you can join our program. We help students be successful in a number of different ways. Our most popular services are academic advising and our private tutoring. Our private tutoring works where if you need extra assistance in a particular class, for example, math or English, you would request a tutor with our program and you and that tutor would meet each week for up to one 
hour of tutoring and our students absolutely love having this service. We also help with career guidance. We have some great tools to help you search for different careers. Um, we can help you with your resume. If you don't have one, we'll help you write a resume. We take college field trips to explore universities that you might be interested in transferring to. We can help you fill out the FAFSA. We offer book and calculator loans for uh, certain classes, um, and it is a first come first serve uh, basis. We offer scholarship assistance, and we uh, even do some community service projects around Flagstaff. So we have so much going on in our program. We will be taking applications for the fall 2021 semester starting May 10th. You can find our application online through our website at coconino.edu forward slash trio. And we look forward to seeing you in the fall. Awesome. Trio is a great program. I would highly suggest that you apply for it if you apply to any college that has a Trio program. NAU has one. CCC has one. There are quite a few other TRIO programs at community colleges and all of the universities around the state. Very helpful program, highly suggested. And if you're a person with a disability that's documented, you qualify. So it doesn't hurt to apply. The next video we're gonna watch is for uh, from our CCC to NAU department. Uh, very exciting program there and something I would absolutely suggest that you consider if you're going to stay in town in Flagstaff and you want to do both your community college and university experience here. Welcome to this brief overview of the CCC to NEU program at Coconino Community College. CCC to NAU is a bridge program that began in 2008 as a partnership between Coconino Community College, CCC, and Northern Arizona University, NAU. This program gives you an affordable option for you to earn your bachelor degree from NAU. It allows you to get a feel for the university life by getting you involved in the NAU community even before you start taking classes at NAU. It also serves as the model for the entire statewide to NAU program. Given its close proximity to the NAU Flagstaff campus, CCC to NAU has many unique features. It's an affordable option that allows you to pay community college tuition rates for the courses that will apply towards your NAU degree. A team of CCC to NAU advisors are located on CCC's campus to help you select courses and personalize your degree plan. In order to maximize your enrollment, there are over 80 customized pathways indicating which courses to take at CCC for your intended NAU degree. For most degrees, NAU will accept 64 transfer credits, and we will help you make every credit count. While in the CCC to NAU program, you have the option to live on NAU's campus while taking courses at CCC. If you like, you can enroll part-time at NAU every semester you are in the CCC to NAU program. You can start the university experience on NAU's campus before starting classes at NAU by purchasing access to events, concerts, athletic events, the Health and Learning Center, and NAU dining services. You will also be able to join NAU clubs and organizations. Both CCC and NAU offer scholarships that are dedicated to the CCC to NAU students. CCC scholarship application opens in December. Here are the steps you'll need to take to be in the CCC to NAU program. First, apply to both CCC and CCC to NAU. Both applications are free and can be found on the CCC to NAU webpage link noted in this slide. Second, Watch the online CCC to NAU info session and complete the participant agreement on the info session link also found on the CCC to NAU website. It takes about 15 minutes and really dives into the details of the program. Watching this info session and completing the agreement form is a requirement for new students. Finally, schedule your initial advising appointment with your CCC to NAU advisor. During this appointment, you and your advisor will discuss your intended NAU major and select your courses for the upcoming semester. You can continue to meet with a CCC to NAU advisor every semester to ensure you are selecting courses that align with your goals at NAU. When it's time for you to start taking classes full-time at NAU, CCC to NAU advisors will assist in your transition every step of the way. You will watch the Transition to NAU workshop video detailing the big picture overview of your transition from CCC to NAU. 
Then, you will schedule your transition appointment with your CCC to NAU advisor. In this appointment, you will discuss NAU's admission requirements to make sure you are admissible to NAU. Being in the CCC to NAU program does not guarantee NAU admission. You do not have to apply to NAU at this time. Your CCC to NAU advisor will take care of that for you. The $25 application fee is also waived. Your CCC to NAU advisor will send your official transcripts to NAU, saving you time and money and resulting in a quicker admission decision. In addition, they will connect you with your new NAU advisor. CCC to NAU students benefit from an early enrollment appointment at NAU. This means you will have a junior-level enrollment appointment which allows you to enroll in NAU classes much earlier than traditional transfer students. Reverse transfer is another benefit of the CCC to NAU program. If you transition to NAU before completing your associate degree, we can reverse transfer some of your NAU courses back to CCC to complete your associate degree. Upon your transition to NAU, you are automatically considered for the 2NAU scholarship. This scholarship pays $2,000 a year for up to two years. There is no application required. You simply have to meet the following requirements. 1. You must have been in the CCC to NAU program for at least two semesters. 2. You have to have a minimum 3.0 cumulative GPA from all courses taken at CCC and any other college or university you have attended. 3. You have to have completed at least 45 transferable credits. 4. You must enroll full-time at NAU once you transition. CCC also has two scholarships dedicated to CCC to NAU students. Check the scholarships link on CCC's website for application deadlines. Thank you for letting us tell you about the CCC to NAU program. For more information, you can check out our CCC to NAU website at nau.edu slash CCC to NAU. Again, that's nau.edu slash CCC, the number 2, NAU. You can also call or email us. We'd love to hear from you. And I would uh, follow that up by saying they are a great team. I would highly suggest that you uh, apply for the CCC to NAU program if you are looking to stay in Flagstaff and go to NAU as your post-secondary university experience. I'm gonna stop my share of my screen. I'm actually gonna allow David Preet to share his so that he can give you a little bit more information about what he does in our career and technical education programs. Thank you so much, Noah and Jarrett. Noah, just to double check, can you see my screen and can you hear me? Perfect. All right. So it's wonderful to be here with you. My name is David Preeb, and I'm a CTE specialist here at the college. So for those of you that might not know, um, CTE stands for Career and Technical Education. And these are, are the programs here at the college that are designed um, they're more hands-on, they're more technical, and they're really designed to help you to step into employment. So I'm gonna, just going to share a little bit about that. My hope here is to spark some ideas or maybe interest within you. and You can begin thinking about what career path might be a good fit for you. The first thing I want to share about is, you know, what are the dif what are the differences between degrees and certificates? A lot of different programs they offer both options. So I just wanted to highlight that here really quick. So a certificate is generally going to be shorter in length. So anywhere from six to 12 months, which could be one to two semesters. A certificate is also going to be more hands-on. And the classes that you're taking are really going to dive you into those technical skills that you're going to need for the job. The main focus of a certificate is for you to enter the working world. So to get a job out in the community. An associate's degree is related to that, but it's going to be a little different. So an associate's degree is a bit longer. Um, it might be around two years or four semesters. And in addition to the hands-on courses that you'd be taking, you're also going to be taking some gen eds. So that's, these are your general education courses. So you might have an English class, a math class, or maybe some other electives that you can take to kind of round out that associate's degree. And the main focus here is not only employment, but also advancement or possibly taking that associate's degree, transferring those credits to a university, and then going on and pursuing a bachelor's, which might be around four years. So how do you decide what's best for you? Here's just three things to consider. Um, how much time do you have? How do you wanna balance school and life? 
Um, and then how much do you want to advance in your career? Um, as I mentioned, sometimes a certificate is the best way to enter a field, but if you wanna become a supervisor or maybe a manager, then maybe an associate's degree is the way to go for you. So I'm gonna go through a few of our programs here, but I just wanted to highlight, um, I just wanted to highlight some of the, um, to highlight this page here that's on our website. So this is the CCC to work page. Um, and if you go over future students, um, go over future students down to CCC to work, then you can find all these different tiles here. Um, and so, uh, yeah, this is where you can go to find all these different CTE programs that I'm gonna be sharing about. So let's just dive in here together. What do you guys say? All right, so the first one I wanna highlight is construction trades. So if you're interested in being a construction worker, um, doing carpentry, being a plumber or electrician, if you're interested in solar or sustainable energy, then this is the best pathway for you. Um, and for each of these departments, I wanted to highlight something that's just short and sweet. So maybe you don't have that much time, but you wanna kinda just launch your career. So the short and sweet, um, certification that I want to highlight here for construction is Certified Apartment Maintenance Technician. Um, so five weeks and full-time, or yeah, going full-time for five weeks, and you can be eligible for that. Um, our automotive program is brand new here. Um, so if you want to be an automotive tech and work on vehicles, we've got a program for you. So it's short and sweet, auto tech certificate in two semesters, um, which is around 30 credits. And you'd be taking some classes here at CCC, um, as well as some classes at Finley Honda. Um, if you are interested in public safety and being a first responder, then being, you know, maybe you want to be a police officer or a firefighter, um, an emergency medical technician or a paramedic, then this is the route for you. Um, and the short and sweet certificate here, um, in just two semesters, you can get a fire science intermediate certificate, which sets, it sets you up for those entry level positions to either fight structural fires or wildland fires. Maybe health services is the way you'd like to go. Um, this area continues to be a great one here in Flagstaff um, and really all across the country. So if you wanna be a nurse, a medical assistant, a caregiver, or a certified nursing assistant, which is also a CNA, then this is the best pathway for you. Um, and again, short and sweet, you know, we've got this option that in one semester, you can get a CNA certificate, which really sets you up and launches your healthcare career. Who doesn't want to work with kids? Um, if you're interested in being a child care worker, um, then early childhood education might be the route for you. And in just two semesters, yeah, you can get that early childhood certificate. Computer technology, this is an area that is just growing and expanding every single year. So if you have a passion for working with computers, being a computer tech, um, a network administrator, graphics and web design, then we'd encourage you to look more into this program. Um, the short and sweet thing that I wanna highlight here is the Google IT Professional Support Certificate. So you don't need any experience. It's only six months and you can graduate with this. Um, and the average wage for people in this career field was $55,000 a year. So it's a very well-paying job. So I encourage you to look more into that. It's a brand new program here. And then the last one I'm gonna highlight is business and hospitality. So, you know, if you wanna run your own business, if you wanna be an entrepreneur, if you wanna learn more of the bookkeeping side of things and being an accountant, then this is the best pathway for you. And the short and sweet certificate I wanna highlight is the certificate in accounting in just two semesters, then your, um, yeah, your business could be off to a great start. All right, and then I went through these so quick. So if you're not sure what to study, I just wanted to highlight our career services page on our website. So if you go to the main site, hover over current students, go down to career services, there are some resources here for you. So I'd encourage you to go to this AZCIS website that's highlighted. You can learn more about what your skills are and how those skills might translate into a great career for you. 
All right, and the last additional resource I want to highlight, um, I run a small scholarship program here at CCC. So if any of you do enroll in any of these courses that I talked about, um, please talk to me about a program called CTE Assist. And basically I can help pay for your industry credential. So some of these credentials can be expensive. They might be 400 or $500, but I can actually pay that fee for you. Um, and being having a documented disability is one of the qualifying factors, which is um, great to just, I can save you money. I can pay for that certification for you. So that's all I've got. My contact info is there at the bottom and it's been wonderful presenting to you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, David. All right, so uh, the next little bit we're gonna show you is a, uh, is a, uh, a student who recently graduated from CCC, and you're going to hear her testimony about CCC and her experiences with uh, the Disability Resources Program. Hello, my name is Alexis Bates. I am a student who has a disability. I'd like to share a bit about my history and my types of disabilities that I have. My parents were watching me throughout my childhood because they were concerned about me. My parents noticed that I couldn't hold my attention on a task for a very long period of time. I was very hyperactive as a child and I would throw tantrums. As a result of these indicators, my parents had got me tested at age of five. I was diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Throughout my life, I have felt like I was an outcast from everyone else. I felt like I didn't belong, I felt lonely, and I felt like I was being dis discriminated against. After my diagnosis of ADHD, my parents found a doctor that would help me with my medications. Throughout my childhood, I was put on many different medications for ADHD, such as Ritalin, Contera, Stratera, and Focalin. The medications have side effects that affected my sleeping, my eating and sleeping. As a result, as I got older, Ritalin and Concerta caused me to be very thin and disrupt my sleeping ability. In an effort to reduce these side effects, we tried Cetera, which didn't work for me, and I went back to Concerta. In high school, I changed to Focalin. I learned to how to advocate for myself and ask for more natural types of medication. I was the first disability student at Pine Forest Charter School. Uh, sorry, everybody. I have no idea what happened right there. Hello, my name is Alexis. Uh. I got tested when I was in high school and got diagnosed with dyslexia. While I was in high school, I made friends. I had difficulties with one of the teachers who helped. me, who didn't help me even after I asked for help. I felt like I was being discriminated against while I was at this school because that teacher would help everyone else except me. My parents felt like my education was too important and resulted in me going to a special school in McDonald, Tennessee. All of these teachers helped me there and they all supported me. It was hard being away from home, but it was a learning experience and helped me grow and become more independent. The school specialized in students who had some sort of learning disability. The girls in my dorm made me feel like I was an outcast and made me feel like I didn't belong there. I did have friends, most of them were boys. After graduating high school, I enrolled in Coconino Community College. Every single day I walked through CCC doors, I felt like I was welcome and meant to be there. At CCC, I felt like I was part of the community. I felt I liked the small classes that CCC offered. I knew that I could improve my focus on my studies 
without many dis distractions around me. I got accommodations for helping me with my classes, like notes, a voice recorder, quiet room for testing, and the ability to have my book being read to me by a reader program, which has helped me beyond words. Most of the teachers were very helpful. Two of the teachers went above and beyond to help me in the classes. The tutors helped me in my coursework there. Several different tutors went above and beyond to help, which has made a significant difference for my learning. Those tutors understood that I needed devoted attention. The CCC Disability Resource Center has gone above and beyond to help me in accommodating me in whatever capacity they could. CCC Disability Resource Center has always been there when I needed to talk about something and they were there always to help. CCC Disability Resource Center has made me feel like I'm a valued student and has made me feel like it is acceptable to have a learning disability. Over time, I learned how to ask for help from different advisors, tutors, and teachers when I needed it. I was part of the TRIO, TRIO program, which had provided additional tutoring. TRIO program made me feel like I belonged there and made me feel like I was part of the community. TRIO Student Support Services has also provided emotional and educational support. TRIO has also allowed me to talk to someone about my homework and other assignments, which has been very helpful. They also have helped me above and beyond. I love how supportive TRIO student support is of their students. I went to Northern Arizona for one ac full academic year. I had a teacher that didn't help me, that didn't support me and tried to turn me away from being a teacher. The, the teacher and the department chair only saw my disability and didn't offer encouragement or help. I didn't, I didn't think that they, what they said to me was right because I felt like I was being discriminated against. Throughout this whole process, I didn't ask for DR's help when I should have. It's important to advocate for yourself. When I became an adult, I was able to make my own decisions about medication. I was tired of being on prescription medication throughout my whole childhood and part of my adolescent years. This resulted in me stopping prescription medication and going to over-counter medication. The doctor helped me by saying I should go off gluten which has made a huge impact for me. When I went off gluten, I could tell that I was thinking differently and felt healthier. After all this happened, I found a medication that has helped me and it is called Think Clearly. This medication that I know of does not have any side effects and I can stop, start and stop taking at any point of time. I have a few final thoughts I'd like to share with you. Whether you are a student with, a, with special needs please do not be afraid to ask for help. Asking for help shows others that you are advocating for yourself. I can personally understand and relate to what you all are going through. I, I always know that some, some students who have disabilities can become more frustrated quickly. No matter how hard it may get, please don't give up and keep trying. Thank you for your time. All right, pretty powerful there. I, uh, I wanna give the rest of the time over to any questions that people might have. Any participants who would like to ask any questions or share, now is the time. In fact, I'm gonna stop recording our video so that I can respect anybody's need for confidentiality or privacy. So.